Welcome to the NC Choices webinar series, Teaching Tools for Beginning Farmers, funded by the United States Department of Agriculture's Beginning Farmer and Rancher Development. I am Heather Glennon, Assistant Professor at the University of Mount Olive, and I am going to present the module on Small Ruminant Production. This is one of seven modules offered in this webinar series. In this presentation, we'll talk about small ruminant management. If you are interested in the other resources offered by NC Choices, you can find out more on our website or our YouTube channel. Welcome to the small ruminant management presentation for beginning farmers. We will discuss the facilities needed to raise small ruminants, how to handle sheep and goats, and several common management practices. The first place to start is your farm gate. Biosecurity practices are important to keeping your herd or flock healthy. Pathogens can hitch a ride to your farm through a new purchased animal, visitor shoes and clothing, and even vehicle tires. It is advisable to quarantine new animals for 30 days in an area away from existing animals. You may consider deworming and vaccinating them if needed. When visitors stop by, you might want to offer them disposable plastic shoe covers. Many diseases are carried in manure. There are several diseases that can pass between small ruminants and humans. Several of these zoonotic diseases are listeriosis, salmonella, E. coli, ringworm, and sore mouth. Wearing disposable gloves and or washing your hands after handling animals can help everyone stay healthy. The most basic need of small ruminants is shelter during adverse weather conditions. Protection from cold winds, rain, and snow are necessary in winter. Goats do not put on a lot of external fat, so they get chilled easier than sheep covered in wool. While animals are on pasture during the hot summer months, shade is imperative for animal comfort and efficient weight gains. Shade can be provided by trees. If animals have access to a barn, adequate ventilation is important to prevent respiratory problems. One thing to think about when designing a pasture system is how to corral or catch individual animals that need medical treatment. Here are two options for movable shelters on pasture. Polydome calf hutches made from UV stabilized polyethylene are lightweight and easily disinfected. They work well in cold weather, but may get too hot in the summer. The porta huts on the right are constructed from heavy galvanized corrugated steel. They could be hooked up to a utility vehicle or a tractor and moved. Bossy animals may stand at the entrance and keep young, timid, or older animals from entering. If forage in the pasture cannot meet the nutritional requirements of the animals, Supplemental feed and or minerals may be necessary. There are many different feeders on the market, but you can also use a PVC pipe that has been cut in half. Make sure there is enough feeder space for all animals. Young, timid, or older animals might get pushed away. The feeder should be easily cleaned when animals poop in them. Raised feeders are also an option. Being able to provide fresh, clean, and cool water on pasture can be a challenge. Underground water lines can be installed throughout the pasture systems. The USDA and RCS may be able to provide financial help for water systems. If animals are being kept or worked in a barn, make sure there are non-slip floors and functional pens that don't crowd the animals. If feeding hay during the winter months, Try to elevate the hay off the ground to limit waste and fecal contamination. Make sure there is enough space for all animals to eat. Fresh water can be provided with a plastic bucket, hose, and a float. When animals drink, the float fills the bucket back up immediately. In the summer, algae may grow in the water buckets, so they will need to be cleaned often. A carport can also be used to provide shade in the summer months. 
Sides can be added to keep cold wind and rain off of the animals. Dry clean bedding will help animals stay healthy. Flies can become a problem during warm weather if moist bedding is available for them to lay their eggs. Dirt, straw, or shavings could be used as bedding. If animals lay in wet manure for long periods of time, there is also a risk of mastitis or foot scald. Fencing is a substantial expense in any pasture-based livestock operation. Goats are a little more challenging to keep in than sheep. When deciding on the type of perimeter and interior fencing to use, ask yourself these questions. Can animals squeeze under it? Can they jump over it? Are the openings large enough to squeeze through? Can they get their heads and or horns stuck in it? Can they injure themselves? Barbed wire is not a recommended type of fencing. More information on this topic is provided in the cost-effective infrastructure presentation. In order to provide adequate nutrition to all groups of animals on your farm, a producer may need to manage them in separate pastures. Nursing mothers need the highest level of nutrition. In the picture above, bucks are being kept in an adjacent pasture to the females. Prior to breeding season, animals may need to be separated into different breeding groups based on numbers and genetics. Be advised during breeding season, males may jump the fence and have unsupervised visits. You may also need to provide separate groups for younger animals who need supplemental nutrition for weight gain, or older, sick, or injured animals may need to be separated and fed differently. Animals should be checked upon at least once a day. There are several things to note during your daily observation. So here we see a goat, and there are many points that we are going to talk about that you should observe on a daily basis. Starting in the front, is there discharge from the nose or eyes? This could be indicative of a respiratory problem. A heavy load of internal parasites can lead to anemic or white eyes or swelling under the jaw, which we also call bottle jaw. An infestation of external parasites can also lead to a rough hair coat or patches of missing hair. By running your hand down the back of small ruminants, you can determine body condition score. It is not, if it is not ideal, you just need to adjust the ration. We will discuss this more in the next slide. Also, you should note, does the animal have a dirty tail or diarrhea? Diarrhea is a symptom of many different diseases, such as parasitism, bacterial infections, or an imbalance in the nutrients. As the animals walk, note if they are limping, if they have sustained an injury, have foot scald, or if they need to have their feet trimmed. When determining body condition score, feel the fat cover over the ribs and the loin as well as in between the sternum between the front legs. Langston University has produced an informative video on how to do this. Body condition score can range from 1 to 5. 1 is emaciated and 5 is obese. Depending on the animal's age of, stage of production, the ideal score can range between 2.25 and 3.5. Females in late gestation should have the highest body condition score because they will lose weight as they begin to produce milk after delivery. Here are three sheep with body condition scores of 1, 3, and 5 as you look from left to right. The U in the middle is in ideal condition. The U on the left is either not getting enough nutrients or may have a heavy internal parasite infection. She may have trouble coming into heat and getting pregnant. The U on the right is too fat and costing the producer a lot of money. She also may or may not get pregnant. If she gets pregnant, she may have trouble giving birth due to the internal fat stores. Sheep and goats are herd animals and travel, graze, and rest in groups. 
Producers can use this to their advantage when moving animals to new pastures or to a handling facility. Usually there is a lead animal. If you can identify the leader and get them headed in the correct direction, the rest of the animals should follow. Take note of any stragglers as they may be sick or have an injury. It is easier to move animals when they are handled in a quiet, low-stress environment. The flight zone is the distance the animals keep between you and them. Once a person enters the animal's flight zone, the animal will move away from them. Animals that are handled frequently have a smaller flight zone than wilder animals. The animal's point of balance is their shoulder. When you stand behind the point of balance, the animal will move forward. If you stand in front of the shoulder, the animal will back up. Sheep and goats that have been bottle fed and are very friendly may not follow the animals or move where you want them to go. There are several ways to restrain a goat for safe handling or medicating. If the goat has horns, you can hold them gently by the base of the horns. While it's uncommon, the horns of young animals can break off if they get pulled too hard, get caught in something, or are butted by a larger animal. A collar can also be used to walk a goat around and hold them still. Wooden or metal stands can be used to restrain the goat's head. This will allow a producer to trim feet or medicate the animal without needing a second person. Sheep can be set on their rump or dock. Make the sheep sit down by turning its head against its body. Set their back against your legs and hold them into place. Once they are in this position, they are fairly immobile. If you are in the small ruminant breeding business, there are several management practices that you will want to perform on your young animals. The first management practice is identification of each individual animal to make sure the most accurate records are kept. If an animal gets sick or injured, medication records need to be kept and drug withdrawal times followed before the animals enter the food supply. Permanent identification methods can include a tattoo on the underside of the ear or an ear notch, which is less common. Temporary identification methods can include a plastic or metal ear tag, a collar with a tag, crayon or paint mark on the back, or a leg band. All sheep and goats transported or marketed from North Carolina premises must be herd or flock of origin identified by one of the following. USDA Scrapie Eradication Identification Tag, Volunteer Scrapey Monitor Herd Tag or Registration Tattoo and Registration Papers from a Recognized Sheep or Goat Breed Association. Producers must register their herds with USDA APHIS, the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, and get a premise ID number or a PIN number. Plastic ear tags that contain the PIN number and the individual animal ID can re be requested from USDA APHIS free of charge in 2019 and 2020. Some producers may choose to disbud their goats. This practice involves using a hot iron on a young animal to stop the horn buds from growing. There is a risk of death if the iron is held onto the head for too long. Because there is also a risk of tetanus, make sure the mother has been vaccinated prior to kidding. The kid can also be given a tetanus antitoxin injection at the time of disbudding. While it may be safer for caretakers to work around animals that do not have horns, horns are a natural defense mechanism and help to cool the animal during the summer. Males that are not going to be used in the breeding program can be castrated in one of several ways. An elastrator places a rubber band around the top of the testicles close to the body. The testicles will die and fall off in a few weeks. 
To reduce stress and pain on the animal, it is recommended to castrate when they are very young. But there is a higher risk of urinary blockages later in life if these bucks are castrated at a young age. A burdizo is used to crush the spermatic cord and cut off the blood supply to the testicles. A knife can also be used to cut open the bottom of the scrotum and allow the testicles to be removed. Animals should be monitored after castration for infection. It is recommended to dock or remove the tail of wool sheep when they are born to prevent buildup of manure and wet wool on their hind end. Flies could lay eggs in wet soiled wool and then the hatched larvae will feed off the sheep's skin. This is called fly strike and can lead to infection and death. Docking can be accomplished with an elastrator or an electric docker. The heated blade of the electric docker instantly cauterizes the wound. A tail that is docked too short can lead to rectal and vaginal prolapses later in life. Small ruminant hooves need to be trimmed to prevent lameness and ensure animals can graze and gain weight. Generally, goat's hooves need to be trimmed more often than sheep. The rate of hoof growth depends on diet and whether or not animals wear their hooves down naturally in the pasture. Hoof shears, a utility knife, or an electric hoof knife that grinds down excessive growth can be used. Lambs and kids are generally weaned from their mothers between two and three months of age. They are grazing and eating supplemental feed at this point in time. Collecting weaning weights and calculating average daily gain can help a producer which females to retain in the breeding herd. Animals can be vaccinated against clostridial diseases and dewormed at weaning. Injections should be given in the muscle or under the skin in the animal's front end. Injecting into the rump muscle can cause blemishes and abscesses in the meat. The weaning process is very stressful for young animals as they leave their mother and experience a change in diet. This makes them more prone to the diarrheal disease coccidiosis. If males have not been castrated, they should be separated from females as puberty can be reached as early as four to five months of age. The moms should also be checked for parasites and treated at this time also. Parasite control is an extremely important topic to small ruminant producers and will be discussed in more detail in the health presentation. There are many gastrointestinal parasites that affect sheep and goats by decreasing production and causing death. The most important parasite is called Homonchus contortus or the barber pole worm. These worms attach to the abomasum lining and suck blood causing anemia in the animal. It is suggested that all small ruminants be famacha scored every three to four weeks especially during the hot, humid summer months. To do this, a producer pulls down the animal's bottom eyelid and scores the amount of anemia according to the chart on the right. Animals that score a four or five warrant treatment with a dewormer. Producers should be trained by a veterinarian or an extension agent in FAMACHA scoring. There is a large body of research that shows parasites have become resistant to chemical dewormers. When we use FAMACHA and only deworm the animals that are seriously infected, we can decrease the risk of resistance. Many dewormers are not labeled for small ruminants. Producers should establish a veterinary client-patient relationship in order to use these medications under the extra label drug use regulation. The veterinarian will prescribe the correct dosage and withdrawal time to ensure there is no residue in the meat before it enters the food chain. To properly administer oral dewormers, make sure to position the drench gun over the tongue and down the throat. There are several alternatives and management practices that can decrease parasitism that will be discussed in the health presentation. 
you can determine the age of a sheep or goat by its teeth. When they are born, small ruminants will have eight baby incisor teeth on the bottom of their mouth. They will never have any top incisor teeth. They will instead have a hard dental pad. This is a typical characteristic of a ruminant animal. When they turn one year old, the two middle teeth will fall out and be replaced by larger permanent teeth. When they turn two years old, the next two baby teeth will fall out and be replaced by permanent adult teeth. This will continue until the animal is four years old. As the animal ages, the, their teeth may wear down or fall out. Senior animals may experience trouble eating and lose weight. Wool breed sheep will need to be sheared in late spring or early summer to keep them comfortable and productive during hot, humid weather. The wool from most meat sheep breeds is not valuable and usually discarded. Once the animal is set on its dock, a professional can shear off the fleece in one piece in less than one minute. It is recommended to fast sheep for 12 hours prior to shearing to make the procedure easier for the animal and the handler. Hair breed sheep, such as Dorper, Katahdin, and St. Croix do not need to be sheared. They have tufts of hair-like wool that fall off in handfuls during the season. Predator control is paramount to a successful small ruminant operation. Coyotes, stray dogs, and bobcats pose a threat to lambs and kids. Fencing can be your first line of defense. Many producers employ livestock guardian dogs, such as Great Pyrenees, Anatolian Shepherds, or Maremas. Donkeys and llamas can also be protective of their small ruminant charges. Each animal's unique personality, instinct, and temperament should be evaluated before adding them to the pasture. There have been cases of guardian animals harming or killing the animals that they should have been protecting.